In this video, I want to cover some of the top mistakes that students make using the rules of X marks because I don't want you to make these same mistakes. And I see these mistakes happen time and time again. So let's go ahead and cover them. So therefore you have an understanding and you are prepared when they show up and you're not going to do them yourself. So the first mistake is basically when we have a, um, an exponent over another exponent. Now I know we can use the division property here, but I just want to kind of explain where a lot of times when mistakes happen is when students sometimes want to solve this by like breaking, breaking down the exponents. So they can say X squared is X times X, right? And then we say x cubed is going to be x times x times x. Now, this is all correct. And then a lot of what students do now is they apply the division property, right? And they divide out the x's and they say, oh, guess what? All I'm left with is an x. So therefore, that is the final answer, which is x. And no, that is incorrect. Because see, what happens here is we actually have a couple things that are going on. We have a still, there's actually a one that is still in the numerator. And it's important to understand that this x is still in the denominator. So we just can't magically take a variable or a number in the denominator and then just put it inside of a numerator, right? Or just at, by itself. So what's happened here is this is incorrect, but what we could do is we could rewrite this as one over X, or if we wanted to write this in the numerator, then we could say as X to the negative first power. So therefore that's going to be that reciprocal um, identity we can go and apply. Now, again, another way to kind of avoid this here is you could say X squared you know, minus, um, I'm sorry, when you are dividing your exponents, remember you are going to subtract the powers. So X squared, and then you just do two minus three is going to equal a X to the negative first power, which is also equal to a one over X. So you can avoid it there, but I don't want you to like disregard like this understanding, this breaking it down. Just don't like forget about there's a one up there. And if you have a something in the denominator, you just can't immediately like get rid of it and uh, forget that it never happened. All right. The next mistake is again, something that is very common that happens to students all the time is because here they're trying to remember the rules, but they're not expanding it, which they could do. So a lot of times when students see like multiplication of exponents, what do they do? They multiply the powers. Two times three is X to the sixth. And that is incorrect. Now, again, a better way to kind of approach this or to kind of look at this would be, well, let's actually like expand this out. If I have X squared, that's X times X. And if I have X cubed, that's going to be a X times X times X, right? X times multiplied by three times. So now if I actually count this out, I have X times X times X times X times X, which is actually equal to a X to the fifth power. So if you forgot the rule of when you're multiplying exponents, you add the powers, breaking it up is actually something that you can use to your advantage in this case. So therefore we could see that X to the two plus three is going to equal an X to the fifth power. So you can see how that's going to work, or that could be another um, helpful way to approach a problem like that. All right. The next example is something again, that comes up all the time is if we have like, let's say three to the zero and a lot of students will say, Oh, um, what is something raised to the zero power? I kind of forget. And then they'll just say, well, let's say three to the zero power. That's just going to equal a three. Right. And they're like, I, I don't remember. And that is incorrect. Three to the zero power is equal to a one. And a quick like way to just kind of like see this or understand this is just to kind of start listing out like your powers. OK, so if I had like three. Right. And let's say three to the first power is equal to three. Then you could say three squared. Right. Is equal to nine. Three cubed is equal to a 27. Now, obviously, you can keep on getting over if you keep on getting larger, larger numbers. Right. You see all we're simply doing here is we're just multiplying. Sorry, I don't know why I lost that there. But all we're simply doing here is multiplying by three, right? So 27 times three is going to be an 81. So when we go in this direction, what are we doing? We're multiplying by three, right? So if we're gonna go in the opposite direction, we're going to need to divide by three. So if we're going one, two, three, four, five, right? Now let's go in the other direction. Four, three, two, one. Three to the zero power is gonna be, what? Well, what is three divided by three? Well, that's just going to equal a one. Okay. So therefore three to the zero power is equal to one. And again, you can list this out. It doesn't matter what your base is, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's anything raised to the zero power is always going to be one. So that's an easy thing just to always like remember tattoo it, maybe not a tattoo, but it's something hopefully that you can practice enough to, um, remember. And, uh, but yeah, it's not going to equal to a one only something raised to one is going to equal itself. All right, the next example kind of build on this, which is going to be like three to the negative second power. A lot of times students say, oh, that's going to equal a negative nine. No, 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 no. That does not equal a negative nine. All right. So again, we need to understand like, what does it mean to have a negative power? Like what are our negative powers? Well, it's important to recognize this. This is really, we can rewrite this as three to the negative second power, or I'm sorry, three to the negative first power times two, right? We could use that power rule here where you multiply your powers. 
So then we need to understand is, well, what exactly then is three to the negative first power? And kind of going back up to what we had over here, if we keep on dividing by three, right? Divide by three here to get one. And let's go ahead and divide by three again, right? Well, that's going to give me a one third. Well, then what power is this going to be? So four, three, two, one, zero. That means we're going to now have to go in our negative powers, right? That's going to be three to the negative first power is equal to one over three. This goes back to our reciprocal property that we talked about up here, if you remember. So when I have this, this is technically going to be a one third quantity squared. And remember something squared just means it's multiplied by itself. So this is going to be a one third times a one third, which is equal to a one ninth. Okay. Or another way you can just kind of think about this is if you have a three to the negative second power, again, you can just use that reciprocal property and just say one over three squared, which is equal to one to the um, one over nine, but um, it's definitely not going to be a negative nine, right? You can see all we're simply doing is dividing by three, going down that way or multiplying by three, but you're not actually making the power um, going to be anything negative. So hopefully this video is helpful for you. And so I look forward to seeing you in the next video.